The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earth Your Podcast, coming to you on January 12, 2023. It is the first solo episode now of the year. I actually just dropped my first episode on the feed uh, literally this morning, last night, this morning. We recorded late with Kyle Nash. Um, this is the first uh, solo episode. How are you guys doing? And I'll explain to you why things have uh, kind of come on up and get a little slower. It's not a bad thing, I put a record. But again, this podcast, uh, uh, you can catch on all podcast catchers such as I, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts. And guys, especially please. Follow me on YouTube, especially youtube.com slash at Ernest Christian. Get all the content there, especially as well. Um, as I mentioned, I'll mention in a second about some of the things I'm doing now these days. I'm going to keep this one a little, not saying short. We'll see how long this goes, but I'm going to keep this. I actually initially wanted to do like a bunch of topics, a bunch of things on my mind to talk about, but I think I'm going to spread those down to a couple episodes. I'm going to kind of skip this like three or four different things to talk about really honestly uh, on the docket. Um, Obviously, this is a uh, we are officially uh, an NFL uh, playoff time now. Uh, the Wild Card Weekend. Should I say? I'm sorry. Should I say super, 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 super Wild Card Weekend? Um, about to get down this weekend, and yes, my New York Giants are in. So I'm pretty stoked about that. But of course, it's a uh, you know it's bigger than the Giants, of course. Um, so this time of year, as you guys know, whenever we uh, get to this time of year, um, I like to look back at my predictions. And how I did, as you guys know, before we start the season every year on this podcast, we've done this for years now. We always do a over under a season preview over unders. Uh, we we look back at the we look at the over unders uh, uh, going to the year of wins predicted by Vegas and whether or not we go over under on that. Myself uh, with, with my, my my friends Chris and Zach. Of, of course, they can't be here to do this. So I always do the reviews on my end. Because it's my show, obviously. <laughs> but uh, so I want to look back a little bit and see how I did this year on my predictions, where I predicted them, where they ended up, and what the Vegas number was, and where they uh, stood out. So let's go and, and, and in doing this, we'll do, we'll do a little bit of analysis on this on each team as we go into the off season, at least for the, the non playoff teams, and then of course the teams that are going to be living in the playoffs will go there as well too. So as we always do, A to is it W the last team? The W Washington is the last team. There's no X, Ys, or Zs in the NFL. Quite frankly, not in the NBA either. <laughs> so, all right. The first team we have here is the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they their number was eight and a half wins. I went over on that. I was dead wrong. Um, they went at four and thirteen. Of course, they fired their coach Cliff. Their coach Cliff Kingsbury. It was a disastrous year. A year that started out with their top receiver DeAndre Hopkins on the I. Uh, well, actually suspended for six games. Um, who came back? Uh, Colin Murray, of course, uh, you know, injured, season-ending injury. I think it's the ACL, torn ACL. Um, he's gonna probably gonna miss a chunk of next year too. So this is a, a team in limbo right now. Um, so I got that one wrong on the Cardinals. I thought it'd be slightly over after last year's uh, decent year. Um, disastrous year for the Cardinals, obviously. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, their overall number was four and a half wins. Um, I had the under. I thought they'd be the worst team in football. They were much better than that. There was seven and ten, albeit a very bad division, obviously in the NFC South, where every team had a losing record, including the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who will be hosting a playoff game this Monday night against Dallas. Um, very competitive team. I thought they had a lot of, saw a lot of fire um, in, in moments. Um, not a good team, and obviously there's a lot of questions on that roster. Um, they need a quarterback, obviously. America's Mariota is not the answer, um, but they showed they 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 were definitely a team. I thought were, you know, first game moments. But at the same time, we just, you knew that once things settled in, they would come back to earth. And, and granted, seven and ten for a team that was supposed to be that had a four and a half win uh, uh, pro, uh, projection, and I went under on that one to tell you that you know they almost du- they almost doubled the number. So, but kudos to the Falcons, of course. The Baltimore Ravens, their number was nine and a half wins. I went over on that one. They got there. Um, in fact, their number was I think ten and seven was the final record. Um, but of course, they're they're in a lot of limbo now too because of the situation with Lamar Jackson and whatnot. Uh, Will he he may not, he may not play this game against the Bengals. He's missed the last uh, I think six games of the year, much like last year. 
Um, they 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 have not looked the same. Um, um, I mean, comparison to last year, they they at least won a couple of games without him, but they looked good in those in those in those victories. Last year, they completely tanked without him, losing every game after they got hurt. Um, so the, the Lamar Jackson thing is gonna be is gonna be interesting to see how that plays out in terms of whether or not they fr- if they franchise him, if they give him an extension with more guarantee uh, a new contract with guarantee money. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be one of the biggest talking points of the uh, off season once the season's over, whether, whether or not it's this weekend or beyond. But I got the overall on the Ravens. All right, we have the Buffalo Bills. The overall number was eleven and a half wins. I went over on that one, and they got there. They went thirteen and four. Uh, they were they are the number two seed in the AFC. Probably could be the one to see what happens. Had they played the Bengals Bills, Bengals Bills game a couple weeks ago, but we know what happened with that with Demar Hamlin. Shout out to Demar Hamlin, of course, are recovering. He's out in the hospital now. God bless that guy, that kid. He's a, a special human being. As we're learning a lot about him in the last two weeks. Um, they played the Dolphins this weekend as well. Um, if I got that one right, Buffalo Bills are one of the favorites to, to reach the Super Bowl in the AFC. We just, we just see how they how they how they uh, how things play out there because obviously it feels like a team of could, could be could be a team of destiny here. We'll see. How about the Carolina Panthers? Their overrun number was six and a half wins. I went over on that. I did get there barely at seven and ten. Uh, now it's surprising considering the way they started the year. They were one of the worst teams in football the first half of the year. You know they fire Matt Rule. Um, they're bringing uh, was it what's the coach's name? I've got his, his name Steve. Uh, is this, that's Steve Kime. It's Steve, uh, let me make sure his name's right. There it is, Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes uh, doing a fantastic job. He may he may have done enough also to actually be considered to be the the, the permanent coach for the team, um, especially, especially the fact that he was unceremoniously fired the one year in Arizona uh, a few years back. Uh, but this team looked, you know, this team, uh, you know, started year, the started year off really bad with Baker Mayfield's quarterback. He was horrible. Um yeah, PJ, PJ uh, Walker was a quarterback for a little while. He was okay in moments, but you know, Steve Wilkes being able to, you know, they they, they, were, they were a seller to the trade down line. They traded away Robbie Anderson and a couple of pieces, but you know, you know, they, they actually settled in and actually were actually in the conversation of winning the division had they beaten Tampa uh, week seventeen. But of course, that that how that played out. Tom Brady did Tom Brady things, but I got the over on that one as well too. So that's the last. I got three uh, three wins there. All right. The Chicago Bears, I had they uh their over number over, their over under number was six and a half wins before the year season started. I went under on that one. I got that one correct as well. Uh, they went three and fourteen. They'll have number one pick in the draft. Um, and I, as I said, if you listen to my, my unfiltered podcast, which I recorded yesterday, I recorded. Uh, I basically said um there are five teams in the NFL I believe are the most the teams I'm the most interested in to look at how they do things going going to 2023. The Bears one of them. The reason why I said that because the Chicago Bears will have the number one pick in the draft, number one for starters, and they are projected also to have the most cap room of any team in the NFL. So a team of options could be interesting in, in itself. Plus, I do love Justin Fields as quarterback. Let's see him get some weapons going forward, and let's see if the Bears, this Bears team can uh, rise from the ashes, especially in, especially in the division where you have the Vikings, yes, they're 13-4, but not really impressive, um, and they they can crater at any point. The Packers could be in limbo with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he leaves the team. Maybe he doesn't leave the team. We don't know. Um, and the, the Detroit Lions are, are now starting to ascend now. So there's some openings there for the Bears in the, in the next couple of years. If they can get the nail the draft here, nail free agency here, maybe this is a team that we, 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 we talk about in, in the wild card, at, least, at the very least in the wild card picture in the next two or three years. All right. The Cincinnati Bengals. Their overall number was nine and a half wins. I, got, I went over. I got that right as well, too. Um, they went, uh, tw- was it 12 and f- five? I think this year, maybe a little more than that. Let me make sure I get that correct. Yeah. They actually went 12 and four, 12 and four. Remember they, they played one last game because of the, uh, the tragic, uh, incident in uh, Cincinnati a couple weeks back with Tamar Hamlin, of course. Um, and a team that started slow. Oh, and two Remember, they started Oh, and two, uh, and we thought maybe they were in trouble. And since then they, they have been one of the hottest teams in the league in the last, uh, really since, <laughs> since week three on. And it's, my personally, I think my personal pick now, like I had Buffalo winning, winning all this year for the year started. But if you ask me right now in this moment, who which team I like the most in the AFC to get to the Super Bowl, I like Cincy here, honestly. I do like Cincy a lot. So there's that. All right. So staying in Ohio, we have the Cleveland Browns. The overall number was eight and a half wins. Um, they went seven and ten. Um, and, you know, I, I had the under in that as well. And I got the under. Um but there were moments, there were, there were opportunities for this team to actually, to really, you know, make some headway. They, they, there were some games early in the year, the Jet game early in the year that they blew, the Atlanta game they blew. You know, you put those games, those losses in win columns, they're now 9-8. and they're now nine and eight. 
You know what I mean? And nine and eight got, gets you a seven seed in the AFC. It's a lot of blown blown uh, opportunities there. It's a solid team. I, I'm looking at next year. Deshaun Watson, um, you know, came back week you know week thirteen this year and didn't play that all that well. But we'll see with a whole new camp now and everything else to see if they, this Brown team can turn things out. They're, they're one of those other teams I believe are fascinating to watch next year in 2023. All right, the Dallas Cowboys. Over a number was ten and a half wins. I went over. I got that right as well. Uh, but a lot of speculation about, about the Cowboys if they lose to Tampa this week. If uh, about Mike McCarthy, if the if the Cowboys lose a, g- a game, they should win. But we'll see. Um, always a t- the team with the most soap opera, e- especially in the media. All right, Denver Broncos. Uh, over a number was um, ten and a half wins. I went under that one as well too. I got that right, but I did not think it would be this bad. I thought it'd be ten and seven. I mean, and I said that all on, on, with the assumption that the AFC West was just too deep of teams. Um, coming into the year, we was, remember we were praising the AFC West at one point that probably the greatest division on paper <laughs> ever. And look how things played out. Only take two teams to the playoffs. How about that? Uh, Russell Wilson, disastrous year. Nathaniel Hack got fired a couple weeks ago um, in, one, in less than one season <laughs> as head coach. Um, but again, one of the teams I'm still looking at next year as uh, – Possible, you know, you know, interesting team because of Russell Wilson. I, I'm not convinced he's that bad just yet. I, I got to see another season of this before I'm convinced that he's done or damaged goods. Um, what, you know, where where are they going with, with the coaching? Who are they do they go, go after? Sean Payton? Who knows? Um, they got an elite defense still. Um, they got playmakers. So the Broncos to me are a team that can be very quickly back in the mix if they can turn things around um, with the pieces they have there based on their history. But we'll see. But I, I think that one right though on the under. But I think it'd be, I think they'd be they'd be five and twelve bad. I, I thought it'd be ten and seven. Uh, not not a uh, um, uh, was it five, what, five and twelve this year? Yeah, five and twelve. Yeah. So, all right. Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions. Uh, over a number was six and a half wins. I also went over on this. They were even better than I thought they'd be. I thought they'd be like a seven and ten, eight and nine team. They were nine and eight. Barely missed the playoffs by a tiebreaker with the Seattle Seahawks. Another team I'm looking at next year in 2023. Uh, Dan Campbell's done a fantastic job. Jared Goff um, had a solid year this year as well, too. Um, a team that started slow, too. But what, what were they won in six one point in a year, and it was they surged back into the uh, wild card race. And man, that Carolina loss a week uh, was a week sixteen. Man, it's bad now, especially because of you know they they win that game there during the playoffs and probably also a six seed in, in the NFC uh, playoff picture. All right. Let's see here. Green Bay Packers. Here we go. Uh, over, uh, the over, over, yeah, the over under number was ten and a half wins. I went over on that. I got that one wrong. Um, yeah, drama. Aaron Rodgers. So sick of hearing about it on on, on, on social media, on media as a whole. Yeah, it's, it's, it's annoying now. Um, let's see what what, what what direction they go in. Yeah, yeah, Rodgers gets some blame as well too. So does coach coaching as well. So does defense playing hasn't played well in stretches. Receivers didn't play well to start of the year. They fell behind an eight ball early, got surged late, and then had a chance to get in the playoffs and lose those pesky Lions, man. You know? We'll see how the, what the Packers do next year. We'll see. All right. Houston Texans over on a number was four and a half wins. I went under. I got that one. They were three, 13 and one. Fire Levy Smith at the one year. Um, disgusting ownership group. Can't st- I mean, this the front office is this disaster. I mean, this team's going nowhere. I I think this team's gonna be gonna be in the dumps for a long time because I don't think anybody's gonna want to anybody of any relevance gonna want to coach there or want to play there. So there's there's that. Um, they're a disaster. Um, how about this? How about this disaster? Um, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, over our number was nine and a half wins. I went over on that one. I got that one. De- I think everybody got that one dead wrong. They were four twelve and one this year. Matt Ryan was putrid. He might retire in the year most likely. Um, they fired Fra- Frank Reich middle of the year, brought in Jeff Saturday. Who knows? He's the future there. Um, just another disaster there in, in Indianapolis, and we'll see what, what direction they go in. But I got one way wrong. We all did. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, over our number was in the six and a half wins. I went under. I got this one wrong. They went nine and eight. Uh, another team that started slow, two and six, and then surged in late in the year. Won the AFC South. I'm going to be hosting a playoff game this weekend as well, too. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Um what a season of the year makes. You go from you go from Urban Meyer, the disaster Urban Meyer, to now, you know, Doug Peterson, who a guy who just won a Super Bowl a couple of seasons ago. And they even when they started slow, you, you saw you saw the possibilities and I was saying, Well, wait till next year. No, well they they, they showed it a combination of them being great 
along with Tennessee tanking, which we'll get to in a second, um, you know, made this a possibility. So the Jaguars on, on, on one of the teams on the way up. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was a, f- a fantastic ending to the year for the Jaguars, who won the AFC South. Got a one wrong. I thought it would be a good, a, a frisky team. I didn't think, I, I thought the AFC would be better than it was. And clearly, it, it wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be. And the Jaguars were better than we thought it was going to be. All right, here we go. The Kansas City Chiefs over on over under number was ten and a half wins. I went I went uh, over on that one. They crushed that one with a fourteen three year number one seed in the AFC. Pat Mahomes should be the MVP. Um, this was this was actually supposed to be like a a, a rebuilding ish year for the Chiefs. You know, with a lot of rookies in there, losing Tyreek Hill, and Pat Mahomes proving that he can get the job done with anybody. Playing MVP, it's why the best play, quarterback in football. Just that simple. So, all right, let's see here. Um, next team. L.A. Chargers last year, well, not last year. Um, the number was ten and a half wins. I went under this one because I don't trust their coach. Um, and actually, I got this one right. I'm sorry, I, I put I put I put the no, but I got it right because they actually won ten and seven. So I got this one right actually. Um, so yeah, um, but you know they lo- lo- lost the game to the Broncos this weekend. Which, like, again, Brandon Staley playing the starters. Um, I, I put thumbs down thinking, thinking they were going to hit the, uh, the under over what, a week after, but they actually won the game. So, yeah, I got, I got that one right on, on the Chargers, um, barely by half by a half point. Um, we'll see. They're playing Jaguars this weekend. We'll see how that plays out. Um, and uh, Justin Herbert is on his way out to be one of the elite quarterbacks in the league. All right, we got the L.A. Rams. Oh, here we go. Um, they were over numbers, 10 and a half wins for the year started. They went uh, disastrous. Uh, five and twelve this year. Um, a year, just a year after winning the Super Bowl last season, Matthew Stafford could be done. Uh, uh Sean McVay might be done. We hear rumors about him not probably want to take a leave of absence from the team or be done from coaching for a little bit. Uh, this is a team that has no draft capital for other two, so they they might be a team that it's going to be in a mix to selling players now because of where they're at. Um, but yeah, what a disaster for the Rams to come off come off a uh, Super Bowl. This is actually the worst year. Uh, for the they were the worst record for a team um, after winning the Super Bowl the year before, previous the year previous to that. So yeah, what a, what a year for the Rams. I went over that one. We all got that wrong. All got that wrong. All right, let me see here. Um, I think the Vegas Raiders next. Yeah, it's the Vegas Raiders. Uh, their over number was eight and a half wins. I went over on that, and they did not. Uh, even come close. <laughs> they were well. They were seven and ten in the year. Um, another team that was that was a uh, had a lot of uh, um, expectations coming in the year, and they did this terrible. It was terrible. Um, we just saw today. Um, before I came on to record, Derek Carr is announced he's leaving the team. So we're gonna, they need, need a quarterback. We'll see what direction they go on that one. Maybe a Tom Brady. Maybe a push Aaron Rodgers. Who knows? Um, but the Raiders are a disappointment this year. All right, the Miami Dolphins. Overrunning numbers, eight and a half wins. I went over. I got it one right, barely, as they won their last game of the year over the Jets. But they are a team that is limping to the playoffs. No two attack bowler this week against Buffalo. Um, probably no Teddy Bridgewater either, so they're down in the third string. It's going to be an ugly, ugly, ugly game, most likely. Um, a team that, when two was healthy, was, you know, be- I, 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 I'll say it. They, they, they were the best offense in the league this year when two was in, in the lineup. The stats say that. Um, but, again... They fell apart late, and uh, two was concussion stuff. That, that's going to be something to look at going forward. Whether he be uh, the long term solution there, but uh, I think get the over in this one though. Get the over in this one. All right, the Minnesota Vikings over on number was nine and a half wins. I went over. I got there, but what a strange team. Thirteen and four, but also a minus five point differential this year too. Yeah, uh, no one believes in this team. To be honest, with you bigger picture, the playoff team, a good roster, but do you trust Kurt? Kurt, uh, Kurt Cousins, who knows? Uh, but I got the over in this one, and they hit it f- fairly easy. Um, let's see here. New Orleans Saints over on number was eight and a half wins. I went under. I got the one right. They went seven and ten. A lot of people will talk about the Saints being a number one. Coming to the year, Peter King. I remember Peter King. A couple of people saying that Saints going to be a surprise team, win the South, maybe be a one seed in the NFC. And I told you guys I did not see that from the word go. I, I, I did not know where that was coming from. And, uh, yeah, my nose is stuffy. I don't know why. I don't know where. Bad allergies, I guess. I don't know. All right, my New York Giants, the team I did not believe in this year. Overrun number was seven and a half wins. I went under, of course. Um, 
They uh, went nine and seven one. Brian Dayball, first year's coach. Personally, my coach of the year. I know people are going to disagree with that. That's okay. But I think it's coach of the year. Um, this is a team that won four, uh, won four games last year. So it's a big turnaround. Um, you know, I think the only person I'm, I'm, I'm looking at coach of the year besides him is Doug Peterson in Jacksonville. So, but, uh, yeah, um, I, I, the Giants, big turnaround here. Daniel Jones is, looks looks competent. Saquon Barkley is healthy for once. I did not get this one right. New York Jets, five and a half wins the over-under. I went under. I also lost this one as well, too. They went seven uh, and ten. Yeah, seven and ten. But a lot of promise. I, I, I like that. Other than the quarterback issues, because obviously Zach Wilson is not the answer. Mike White, probably not the answer either. Love the roster. Love their roster. And uh, we'll see where they go with that one. Um, uh, another team, maybe, you know, if it's not Derek Carr out, is leaving, leaving the, the Raiders. Maybe the, the, the Jets go after him. Who knows? All right. Let's see. The Philadelphia Eagles, uh, nine and a half wins was the over under. I went over. They crushed this one, went 13 and four. No, 14 and three, actually, I believe. Um, make sure you get that right. Yeah, 14 and three. Played a little bit mediocre during the end of the year, but still the best team in the NF- NFC. Number one seed. Um, Jalen Hurts, MVP candidate. Uh, we'll see how they look in the playoffs, but yeah, this one I crushed. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers over a number of seven and a half wins. I went over just on the on the sheer of Mike Tomlin, and they got the over on at nine and eight. Uh, Mike Tomlin again, you know, fifteen years now coaching that team, fifteen years not never having a losing season. It's so impressive. It's so underrated. Um, maybe if you started Kenny Pickett before you started, he would have gotten the playoffs because he missed the playoffs by one tiebreaker on, with the Dolphins. That's just me. All right, the San Francisco 49ers over a number was nine and a half wins. I went over, and they got there thirteen and four as well, um, and probably the scariest team right now in the league because they remember they, they were three and four, and they've they've won now ten ga- games in a row since. Uh, hottest team in the league by far. Uh, very scary team. Uh, Brock Purdy is the third string quarterback playing very well, playing within the system, um, but that defense is, is so good. Their offense, they have a lot of playmakers there to 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 support Brock Purdy. They're 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 gonna be a problem. Um, they're 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 actually they're my favorites to win the whole thing, honestly. Uh, let's see here, a couple of teams here to go. Seattle Seahawks, uh, five and a half wins was the over under. I went under in this one. I was dead wrong. They went nine and eight, made the playoffs as a seven seed by virtual tiebreaker. Uh, Pete Carroll, get, get, get double his due, get double his due. Uh, he did his did his thing. No Russell Wilson this year without him being traded away, and they look they look like the. Did the right thing so far. Geno Smith, turnaround season, probably my comeback player of the year. Um, yeah, Seattle. You know, just the fact they were actually in the conversation to be in the playoffs was was a, was a shock in itself because this team was supposed to be one of the worst teams in football this year. At least that's what we we're all saying. All right, Tammy Buccaneers over under number was eleven and a half wins. I went over. I was dead wrong. They went eight and nine. Won the NFC South, hosting a playoff game on night football uh, this this weekend, but. Man, what a what a what a what a roller coaster this was this was for Tom Brady, you know. Um, but we'll see. Is it playoffs or new season? Who knows? Um, but it was definitely a um, a roller coaster for the Buccaneers. All right, Tennessee Titans uh, over our number was nine and a half wins. Um, they I went under on that one. I got the one right. They went seven and ten. They cratered though. They were what seven and three one point, and then cratered the rest of the way. Lost every game. Went seven and ten. Um. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume Ryan Tannehill's done there. I'm going to assume they're going to clean things out. I mean, if I'm the Titans, I, I, I know Kyle said in the podcast last night. And I sort of share sentiments, though. If you could trade Derrick Henry at this point now, I would do it because he has he's, he has more value than, than you'll ever have right now. And where you're at as a team right now, with the pieces you guys need, your best asset right now is Derrick Henry. So if you could trade him for even some, even some draft capital, come back, I would do so. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Finally, the last team here to watch the Commanders over a number was seven and a half wins. I went over. I got that one right. In fact, I thought they made the playoffs. They missed it by a week. Um, they went eight, eight and one. Thus, giving the NFC, NFC uh, division, every team in the division being 500 better. Who would have thought that? <laughs> um, uh, uh, but another year where the Cam- Commanders, they got quarterback issues. First thing first. Remember, I'm, not, I'm a big Carson Wentz guy. I'm done. I, my hand cleans, I said last night, I'll say it again here on, on the show. I have now wiped my hands clean across the Wentz. I'm done with Carson Wentz. Uh, Taylor Haneke, solid quarterback, not the answer. They brought in Sam Howell week 18. He played well, but come on now. Uh, so they got a lot of questions to answer. But they're not a bad team, though. They're a bad franchise because Dan Snyder sucks, the owner. 
But other than that, uh, they're not a bad. They're not a bad um, um, team. They got some talent there, and they could, can get a quarterback and a couple of pieces there. They, they could be a a, play, a a perennial playoff team going forward. So, again, that is my. Let me uh, let me count that down real quick. I did pretty well. I think I did pretty well this year on my picks on on that. Let me uh, check that real quick as I have here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, sorry about that. Nine so far there. I have nine. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen teams got right. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen correct. Not bad. Nineteen and thirteen. Not that terrible. Not terrible, you know. Especially in a year where we thought where everything went, you thought everything goes zig, it went zag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, you gotta, you gotta uh, at least, you know, give that. All right, um, YouTube. I spoke on the podcast in the past that uh, YouTube has, has become my go-to now for media consumption, and it's really it's continued to be that be that way. And in fact, it has virtually. I'm not gonna say replaced it. Everything else, because it has replaced it. I still, I still do the podcast and stuff. But when it comes to daily media consumption, like keeping up with the news in the world of sports, in the world of politics, in the world of professional wrestling, for me too, especially. You know, look, I can't, I can't. I love podcasts. I love consuming podcasts, but I also love doing podcasts, which I get to in a second. Um, it's, and it's not enough times in a day to do all of those things. Listen to every podcast. I listen to. You know, you know when you have a family, you have a job, you have other priorities. But YouTube has made it easy for me in a way, and not so much YouTube, but the the the, the mediums uh, or or the like the shows that I listen to normally. That I'm interested in listening to normally. You know, I might be able to watch all their shows in in totality, but a lot of these media, a lot of these media platforms have have smartened up now and made it in a way where if we. I can't listen to your entire two hour podcast or two hour show, whatever it may be. At least put out some clips here and there. And what I do every day, and, and I, I do this every day now, and I kind of like woven this now to, in a way where if I'm doing cleaning, if I make my kids lunch for school, if I'm putting the kids to sleep, if I'm like relaxing in the room, or if I'm like in, you know, whatever, working out, whatever it may be, I use that time, those times as well, to, to, uh, to integrate my YouTube consumption. I pay for YouTube Premium because. I believe it's the value for, for me personally. The value of it is good because I'm using that. I'm making sure that that seventeen dollars I'm paying a month for YouTube is. I'm making sure I'm squeezing that out. So I'm making sure if I'm if I'm doing chores in the house or cleaning or you know doing a project or cleaning my car, I have my headphones on. I put on YouTube and I, I make a playlist of the, of the things going on. All the subscriptions I have, for example, on different channels, which is ESPN or FS1 or different wrestling podcasts or different political podcasts. They put out clips throughout the week and throughout the day. And what I'll do is I'll like run through subscriptions and the feed, and I'll like save it to a certain a specific playlist. And then once I have enough, you know, piled up, which sometimes get up to eighty clips, eighty videos, some clip. But remember, these are clips on the entire show. It's like clips are like average of five, seven minutes long, maybe three minutes long, maybe some maybe a little longer. But and I on a daily basis, I'll, I'll probably hear about between sixty to eighty clips a day. But I. I've done it in a way now where I've interwoven all those things now into my daily life now. So like I said, if I'm doing dishes, making dinner, um, cleaning my car or cleaning the house or doing other things, pop up the headphones, pop up my headphones, one headphone and butt in and just listen to it. And I feel like I'm, I feel like when, when I do that, I, I feel like I'm caught up on, on the current events. Cause I, I love to know what's going on current events. I, lo- I love to consume media. I love listening to sports media, especially too. I love listening to political media, I love listening to pro wrestling media or anything of the sort. And, I feel like when I'm, but this being able to do this now, especially too, I feel like I'm in to know what's going on. And YouTube has been the reason I've been able to do that now. So, like, for example, I like ESPN First Take. Okay, I know people. A lot of people say, ah, this, that, that shows jump the shark, and I get that. But I, I'll tell you what, they Stephen A's division, Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith has had now. Which I will talk about in another podcast because I, I I'm a I'm a big Stephen A. I know a lot of people don't really like him very much anymore, but I I love Stephen A. Smith and I'll talk about it in another podcast. Um, what they do normally on 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 ESPN, what they'll do that they'll like 
take all a bunch of clips from d- different shows. So so like their 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 daily rotation, they'll have Keyshawn uh, Max and and Jay Jay Williams um to take to take three clips from that show, put up on the under on the uh, YouTube on the YouTube on the ESPN YouTube feed. Then you have first take to put up like seven to eight clips, and then you'll have uh uh the get up with uh, uh um Mike Mike uh, Greeny and Michael Greenberg, and they'll put like three four or five clips a day on there, and I'll pile those up into my playlist. You know, same thing with the shows on on FS1, Colin Coward show, Pat McAfee. I'll do it as well too. First things first, first things first on FS1. I'll put th- th- three clips a day. Sometimes I'm feeling frisky. I'll put up a uh, undisputed. Although I, I I skip bills. I, I I can't I can't skip bills anymore. I I've I've, I've I've long overdue gotten rid of skip bills off by media consumption like almost a decade ago. Um, and other things, and then you have you have political political shows like Breaking Points and The Hill, The Rising, for example. Um, and other shows that I listen to. Um, even with with, with wrestling media, but Kevin Nash's show, which which I love, but I don't have the time to sit and listen to the whole two hours sometimes. So they'll put out a lot of clips on the show throughout that one episode, you know, throughout the week, and I'll just add it to my feed, add it to my my playlist, and I'm just consuming as I'm doing other things and having a time to listen to it. So YouTube has now become my number one source of media consumption. Almost, almost, not quite clear there, but almost replacing my podcast feed in a sense. Almost, I say almost because like there's certain shows in the podcast I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sacrifice in there, but for certain shows that I do want to follow, but I can't dedicate two hours a day to listen to it. But you give me some feet, some different clips of the show. I'll do that for you. And YouTube has, has been the one place that I've been able to do that because they've they've facilitated that. And because I have YouTube Premium, I can turn up my phone and it's still play in the background. Whereas if you don't have YouTube, if you don't have the, the, the phone open, number one, you get ads. Number two, also you have to deal with the you know uh, if you turn up your phone like to uh, to a, a battery saving spot. Um, for example, then uh, or to a, a standard spot, uh, it will uh, just uh, stop playing. At least with the premium, you, you do that; it still, it still plays. So, YouTube has been is, is, is now my core media consumption, daily consumption. I love it; it's been fantastic. All right, last thing for get out of here: um, podcast updates. So, since the new year has started, I've uh, made some decisions here on not for this show. This show is, is what's going to be as it always has been for the last. 10, 11, was it 12, 11 years? I've been doing the show now? 11 years? Some of that? Anyway. Um, and, uh, actually, no, it's 12 years. 12 years now. Wow. Um, and, uh, so there were shows I did last year. Remember last year when I started 2022, I had the idea of doing a podcast network. I, I, I had created some shows. You know, I created a wrestling retrospective show. I created an NBA show with my buddy Zach and Chris. I, you know, I t- initially took my Take Three Wrestling podcast, and I threw all of that in the feed. And for a good five months, I did that, and I felt like it was just, it didn't, and I said it was just way too much. So I gave Take Three its own feed in the paint. It, you know, stopped. I stopped doing the paint right, right when the season ended, and then the rest of retrospect, the rest of retrospective podcast, um, I pretty much did a couple episodes, and I just it went silent. Now, um, I have officially dusted dust back off the Inpay podcast with my buddy Zach and Chris, but it is on its own feed. It's on its own feed, um, under the same Ernest Speaking Media Ernest Speaking Media uh, banner, but it's on its own feed. Okay, and then I also lopped off In the Paint, which we relaunched after almost a year with my buddy Zach and Chris, and it has his own feed as well too. So if you, if you uh, want to listen to that that show, In the Paint, you can find it on its own podcast feed. Same with uh, uh, with the rest of retrospective, retrospective, but we'll be dusting off very soon. I got a couple things in the in the in the, in the pike. I'm, I'm gonna be doing that as well too. And I wanted to kind of give these shows its own room to breathe. You know what I mean? This show has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Earnest speaking, unfiltered. I've been doing very consistently now since the new year started. Uh, even before the end of the new year, um, is one topic. Uh, yeah, I try to I try to do that at least three or five times a week. You know, one topic and it's kind of boom, boom, boom. You know, give my 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 thought, my thoughts on that. It's more time sensitive stuff too, especially. Whereas this show is more interviews, uh, more I try more evergreen, we will topics and stuff. So we have that going. Um, I also shows I don't host. Um, I'm doing Hull Up, Hull Up podcast every Tuesday night. I've been doing for now two years now, and that's uh been doing very well. Um, that's be coming to a 
slow. That's going to slow down a little bit now. Once the season's over, we'll obviously we'll still be doing shows in the off season, but it won't be as time consuming week to week until August September. Um, and I said also too. On top of that, I've on that feed. Um, we've well, not me, but Big Jim James Neese. You know, obviously regular this podcast too, especially. He has been. Uh, he created a, a little bit of like a podcast network, kind of kind of same thing I was doing last year. And I contribute. I contribute now every week a basketball show on there as well too. Just me. It's very simple. It's five takes or observations um, that I um, I have in the NBA at large. The show is very simple. It's about ten to twenty minutes episodes. That's it. Simple to the point and efficient. And I've, I've been really enjoying doing that. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I, I, yeah. So, so in essence, right now, I have honestly, I'm doing or involved in six podcasts right now. This show, Earn Speak Unfiltered, In the Paint, The Rest of Retrospective, those are the four that I run. And then you have Take the Wrestling, of course, too. Actually, seven shows. Take the Wrestling, I'm doing Thursday, which is a joint effort by, by myself, uh, Mike, Joe, and Jim now. Five. Huddle Up, which I'm, I'm a panelist on. That's six shows. Um, and then and one, which is seven shows. So yeah, I'm involved in right now seven shows. But remember, it, it sounds like a lot. It really is a lot in some in some context. But if you think about it, not all these shows are every single week, 52 weeks of the year. Like I said, this show is. Unfiltered definitely is, but it's shorter. And the pain's weekly, maybe bi-weekly at times. But it's also seasonal, too, because once the NBA season's over, we're not going to be doing that show for at least a, a month or so, if not longer, unless there's like big stories can come out. Um, the rest of the retrospective show is when I want to do the show, which is could be I could do two shows next week, and then I won't do another one for like a month. It's all according to the topics. It's 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 a project. It's, it's really, that show's really a project, if you think about it. Uh, take three is, is obviously, obviously every week. Not time consuming in a sense, though, other than being there, because it's really just it's a joint effort. And when you have a joint effort, it's a lot easier to do shows of that nature. Huddle up, of course, like I said, seasonal. It's it's seasonal, but it's not. Like it's seasonal, but it's also in a sense where you know we do shows junior off season though, but it's it's done where it's not as time. It's not every Tuesday we do it. You know what I'm saying? And of course, N one it will be also be a seasonal show too as well too. We doing that show through the NBA season, and once it's over, I won't be doing any episodes until season comes back. So, so it's it's, it's pretty understanding, but. I did also, guys, before I get out of here, because uh, I know I'm rambling a little bit, I also created a link tree. I finally did a link tree. And basically, it's one place on social media where I have all of my work. My blog, which I, I'm hoping to, to, to start running again this year, if I have time. All my podcasts I'm involved in. Not just the ones I do, but the ones I'm involved in. Huddle up included and all that. Um, and everything else in my social media stuff. So, if you go to my, my, my Twitter page at each person seven or my Facebook page if you, if you guys follow me there or my Instagram page and click on the link tree in, in the in the bio, you'll see all of my work. All of my work there. And you can and you can pick and choose the things you want you want to interested in. If you like wrestling, follow the wrestling stuff. If you like basketball, follow basketball. If you like like variety of like this show on this show, of course, follow that as well too. But I appreciate you guys your your you guys support. I don't want to my words right now because I'm really hungry. I'm thirsty, I have no drink here, so I'm gonna get out of here. Um again Guys, happy new year. I know it's 12 days in. I shouldn't be saying it now, but I don't give a damn. Um, happy new year, guys. We will talk soon. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll try to, I know there's a lot, you know, two shows down this week after not having a show for, what, 14 days? But we'll get, we're going to get back on the ground here as well on this podcast. This is the main show, of course. This is my number one, this is my baby here, number one priority. So, talk guys later. We'll, and uh, stay up and uh, enjoy NFL playoff weekend. Later. Thank you.